every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Warm welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Martins Dixon. In our major story, Security forces kill suspected Boko Haram kingpin and brother in a gun battle in Kaduna. Federal government says it is moving close to rescue abducted Chibok girls. Visiting Chief Justice of South Africa says corruption has permeated the judiciary in Africa. And outside Nigeria, the man who helped end the Cold War as erstwhile Soviet Union's last foreign minister before becoming president of Georgia. Eduard Shavarnazi dies at age 88. And business news? World Bank launches a new country partnership strategy aimed at helping the federal and state governments boost development in Nigeria. For tonight, South Africa Football Association denies offering Stephen Keshe a coaching job. And now the details. Security forces have killed a suspected Boko Haram kingpin and his brother in a gun battle in Kaduna. Eyewitnesses say the raid on the suspect's hideout at King Kimua Giari began early Monday and lasted about three hours. Security personnel, including soldiers who are said to have on arrival, prevailed on the suspect, whose name was given as Usman, to give himself up. But instead, shots rang from the ceiling, and residents claim that troops broke through the wall to get the suspect's family out of harm's way before the gun duel. Security sources told Core TV News that one terror suspect in Rigasa had been arrested earlier in a suburb of Kaduna before proceeding to pick another one whose phone was used to communicate with the unsuspecting kingpin Usman. Meanwhile, the landlord and the caretaker of the building have been taken into custody. The Nigerian authorities have meanwhile said security forces are closer to rescuing over 200 abducted schoolgirls in Chibok. Coordinator of the National Information Center, Mike O'Meary, cited recent arrests as proof but insisted that details of rescue efforts will not be released. We have identified in the course of this exercise, and that is why even led to the arrest of uh, you know, the, the intelligence, chief of intelligence of, of Boko Haram and also some of the female recruiters and uh, manners of uh, Amory and so forth and so on. So uh, we are getting there, but uh, some of the other information, please bear with me and bear with the security forces. They are still classified because we are on the way there. The federal government is not able to verify whether over 60 women and girls escaped from a Boko Haram camp at the weekend, 
coordinator of the National Information Center, Michael Mary, says at a press briefing in Abuja that there is still no official confirmation. Well, we have put out uh, calls. We are communicating with our people over there to verify this. Uh, we will let you know. We still have not been able to confirm uh, actually what happened and figures. So, and because we don't want to stipulate and say things that we have no confirmation, please bear with us. President Campaign for Democracy, Joe Okeo -Ok Dumakin, has called for quality leadership characterized by passion for the masses. Speaking at the 16th anniversary of late MQ Abiola, Dumakin called on military officials to exercise their competence in rescuing the abducted girls from Sambisa rather than oppressing harmless civilians. Omotayo Alo was there and filed in this report. In celebration of the life of MK Wabiola, civil society groups, movie stars, friends and family gathered at his residence to pay their respect to a man whom they say would have made a change in the country if given a chance. Speaking at the Ruth Lane ceremony for Abiola, former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Priscilla Kuye, says corruption is the major obstacle in Nigeria from development. She called on Muslims to pray for change and peace in the country as they observe the month of Ramadan. So if a leader gives us the basic things that we need in this country, electri electricity, water, education, health facilities, fairly good roads, you know, the people would be happy. But our leaders are not doing this. So we have to look well in 2015 to make sure we elect good leaders who will work for the common good and who will listen to us. Because some of our leaders don't listen to the people. They must listen to the people. Speakers at the event say the death of Abiola is indeed a big blow, but those who are still alive should do the needful in making the country habitable for all. Government must do all within its reach in making sure that the national stadium in Abuja is named after MKO Abiola. That has to be done. It was a pillar of sports, it was for the masses, it was for everybody. Apart from that, there must be a de annulment of June 12 election results. We want to go forward, we have to change how we're governing. We have to change how we're deciding our leaders. We have to go back to believing in ourselves and our greatness and our potential greatness and choose leaders that believe in that instead of leaders that want to buy a house abroad, instead of looking for a situation where they'll do such great deeds in Nigeria that people abroad will want to live here. You know, so we have to come to that realization that Nigeria can be great instead of making other countries great by sending all our wealth into the other economies. So all our leaders, they have a collective responsibility to make Nigeria a better place. Before people pass on, why don't we give them the chance when they are alive, when they are still alive, let them deliver. Let's see if they can really take this country to the next level. Now when they are dead, we, when they are dead, we gather to celebrate them. It's like medicine after death to me. When we're in the fasting period now, the late MKO is saying we should pray and know who we are. The speaker has described as barbaric the action of military operatives over an incident involving their colleague, saying something needs to be done to avoid the repeat of a worst scenario. So just, apart from being in the barracks, let all of them go to Sambisa. Let them go and help us rescue our guests and let them stop terrorizing innocents. Taking loss into their hands is strongly condemnable. And all that they've destroyed, taxpayers' money, they must be made to pay for it. There's something psychologically wrong with, uh, with, uh, with, a, with Nigeria, with the average Nigerian. But who can blame them? When you, awake, when you wake up in the morning, there's uh, uh, electricity. There's no electricity. There's no water. There's no light. No job. No education. You, are, you don't even have money in your pocket to feed. It's, it's, it's a matter of time before we start behaving like animals. 16 years after the death of Moshut Kashima Wabiola, some Nigerians say he was the leader Nigeria never had. Many believe that Abiola would have made a difference. Omota Yoalo, Core TV News, Lagos. The last may not have been heard of last week's blast in Ileife community in Oshun State. The People's Democratic Party governorship candidate in the August 9 election, Iolai Emishore, has thrown the blame of the explosion on the doorstep of the All Progressive Congress. The ruling party in the state, however, replies the PDP 
and insisted that it is a sheer madness for anybody to accuse it of culpability. Franco Malape has details. As widely reported in the media, Agbedegbede community area in Ife Central was thrown into panic last week when an explosion wrecked the area. An eyewitness narrated how it happened. <laughs> We were waking up from sleep, from the sound of a blast. Everywhere was vibrating. We thought it was a building that collapsed. After a while, I opened the door and came out. Then I heard that some people brought in bomb into that area. The People's Democratic Party governorship aspirant in Yola Mishere blamed members of the All Progressives Congress for the explosion, saying it is an attempt to threaten his party members. I'm aware that there are some APC talks here that threaten people around here, very notorious. I believe that uh, since uh, I've been like threatened, that we have to break law and order for him to lose election, that we have to march on blood. He has started his uh, threats, he has been to show his threat, but we will be able to the task. APC, however, denied the allegation, describing it as pure madness. It's pure madness. APC will not destroy his own thing. Our people live in that area. Agbedegbede is a concentration of APC supporters in Ileife. And you went ahead and threw something. I don't want to call it bomb because the police said they didn't see bomb. But they should not bring about tension, which we didn't have in the last three and a half years here. The police authority in Oshun has debunked the rumor of a bomb saying the explosion was a mere explosive device and not a bomb blast as alleged. We discovered that the explosion was caused by what can be best described as a big bang that was knockout and certainly not a bomb. No life was lost, no injury was reported, and no property According to reports, this is the second explosion in the year. The cause of the explosion is yet to be ascertained. Franco Malape, Court TV News, Oshibu. Deputy Chairman of the Lagos State Chapter, the People's Democratic Party, Ola Apena, has described as insensitive the statement credited to the Director of Publicity, Oshun State's All Progresses Congress, over the replacement of the state's resident electoral commissioner. Olajumoke Olatunji has details. The Director of Publicity, Research and Strategy of the All Progressives Congress in Oshun State, Kunio Yatomi, has accused the presidency of pressurizing the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Atari Jega, to replace the resident electoral commissioner in the state, Rufosa Keju, so as to rig the forthcoming governorship election. In a swift reaction, the deputy chairman of the Lagos State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party, Ola Aquino, has described the accusation as insensitive, urging that the INEC is an independent commission and has the responsibility of carrying out its duties independently. The problem now with APC after losing, you, call, you know, this is, the, this is about uh, the first electoral defeat they suffered, you know, and uh, it was... It was um, it was, a, it was an humiliation, sort of, for them, you know, because uh, it was like a bad omen for them, you know. The first outing after they have put up the shams they call National Esco and State Esco, this is the first time. And they suffered serious humiliation in the hands of PDP. And um, they felt the need to reassure those they've been deceiving about their readiness to take over the federal government. If INEC decide that for it, for her to be seen, to be fair, I mean, to, to be neutral, somebody needs to go on leave. The secretary of the PDP in Lagos says APC has become a party that does not accept defeat. It has to do with that. INEC is an independent but the APC. Well, they are free to say anything they like to say. Any election they win, it is free and free. It is free and fair election. Anyone they happens to have lost, they will always find one reasons or the other 
not to want to accept the result. They even, they, they are shameless people. If you look at this last equity people, even the man who contested Fayemi came out and said that this man won. Speaking on the impeachment saga of Adama State Governor Mortal and Yako, Olakwino says Yako should go before the panel and justify his administration if he's truly innocent. Um, impeachment is a constitutional provision. It's a provisional constitution that was enshrined in the constitution to check the excesses of executive, um, elected executive officers of the state. And um, I'm not from Adamawa state. If 70 to 80 percent of the legislators discovered or decided that the governor has committed an impeachable offense and um, they had successfully moved the motion and the motion has sailed through. They had constituted a panel through the acting chief judge of the state. Then what I make of, make of it is that the governor should go and defend it. The impeachment saga of Malta and Yako has continued to generate a lot of reactions from all and sundry. The declaration of two days public holiday in Adama State has been received with mixed feelings. We'll bring you details of these and more after this break. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 comma per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. This one wash challenge will test Aerial to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Cool TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 at 24 hour news station you can now watch call tv news live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com click on live tv on our website and watch us live and welcome to call tv primetime days to follow us on twitter click on twitter icon on our website and facebook click on the facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. Welcome back. The declaration of a two-day work free in Adama State by Governor Murtala Inyako has been received with mixed feelings. The declaration came on a day when a seven-man panel saddled with the responsibility of investigating impeachable allegations leveled against the governor and his deputy was to be inaugurated. While some citizens say it is an attempt at thwarting the efforts of the state assembly, others are of the opinion that the state is in dire need of prayers. Correspondent Percy Dabang has the rest of the story presented from our studios. Workers in Adama State are forced to stay at home after a two-day holiday was declared. The holiday also effectively delayed the inauguration of a seven-man committee which was set up to investigate the governor and his deputy at the Yola High Court, which was deserted. The development has garnered a nationwide response, not at least its political interests. The People Democratic Party in Adama State says the governor is leading the state in a wrong direction. Yako was trying to see to it that some processes 
initiated in the House of Assembly to investigate his misdeeds. You see, he tried to forestall that one, thinking that by this mayor asking the people to go on holidays will actually help him. It's an exercise in futility. The spokesperson to Adama State Government, Ahmed Sajjo, says the holiday is an opportunity for a citizen to pray. We will not face such triple challenges before. Challenges of security, challenges of state of emergency, and then challenges of political crisis. We've not faced triple challenges at once at a go. And I think these are uh, very serious issues that we need to reflect on. A legal practitioner, however, says the governor may have miscalculated. The committee, the constitution of the committee, the seven-man panel, as far as the law is concerned, the constitution of the panel is valid. Now, the inauguration of the committee, people are making a lot of issues out of this. Honestly, let me tell you, legally, whether the committee is inaugurated or not inaugurated. Inauguration is just a ceremony. From the day the committee is constituted and all the members accept to be part of the committee. Meanwhile, the June salaries of the state civil servants are yet to be paid. The Edo State House of Assembly crisis has taken a new twist as the People's Democratic Party lawmakers held a plenary session on Monday. The lawmakers, including the impeached Deputy Speaker Festus Ebia, who acted as Speaker and three suspended members, sat with a mace and a sergeant at arms in front of the entrance to the chamber of the Antoni Enahora Assembly complex. Ebia, while briefing journalists after the sitting of the four members, says the lawmakers resolved that the renovation in the assembly complex was illegal. He also stated that the speaker, Ui Iqbe, and other principal officers of the House, whom they had suspended, should be prevented from making withdrawals from the assembly's account. Ebea added that the lawmakers also asked Governor Adams of Shumule to pay the outstanding entitlements of the recalled teachers and instructed the 18 local government chairmen to forward their receipts of cash disbursements to the House. A heavy presence of security operatives was noticed around the assembly, causing traffic gridlock on major roads around the building. Tension rose at the National Conference on Monday as delegates considered the minutes of last Thursday's meeting in Abuja. Delegates had arrived early for the sitting, which was considered very important due to the controversies generated as a result of the considerations and decisions reached on other reports by the conference last week. As a result of the reported anger by some delegates over these, stand-looking security operatives were stationed at the main entrance of the hall where the sitting took place. Trouble started when a delegate, Yusuf Abubakar, from Sokoto State, drew the attention of the chairman of the conference, Idris Kutigi. To the letter, he says his colleagues from the northern part of the country sent to him on some of the decisions taken in the past. Kutigi, however, ignored him and called for further amendment to the reports, if there were any. Abubakar insisted that the issue he raised must be addressed, saying that the conference had taken some decisions in error. A Labour delegate, Isa Aremu, in his contribution also faulted the recommendation for the creation of states. He says it was wrong to create more states when those in existence were battling to pay salaries. This comment further emboldened Abubakar, who stood up and says the conference is making error because the proceedings are wrong. At this point, Kutegi became angry, insisting that he could rule Abubakar out of order. You're watching Court TV Primetime News. We take another break, and when we return, it will be business news. Stay with us. This one wash challenge you test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. 
Please remain seated and ensure your seat belts are fastened. <sighs> you can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 comma per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. Cool TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electionary campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 A 24 hour news station Nigerians continue to Night, the city of Lagos Be the first to know From the north, south, east, west and around Africa We break the news Now you can catch all the actions live As the news spreads We are Core TV News Welcome to Core TV 24 hour news station Hello there, you're welcome to the World of Business with me, Sabena Izuku. The World Bank has launched a new country partnership strategy aimed at helping the federal and the state government boost development in the country. The new partnership strategy jointly developed with the Nigerian authorities is targeted at creating jobs by performing the past sector and enhancing agricultural product productivity. Speaking at the lunch, Finance Minister Okonjo Wella disclosed that the bank was supporting the federal government create jobs, access to finance, as well as helping in starting a housing revolution in the country. World Bank Country Director Marie-Francois Marie Nelly, for her part, said the bank is committed to working hand-in-hand -hand with Nigeria to unleash its potential for the benefit of all Nigerians. Nigeria's confidence of raising its pension asset to $100 billion by 2034. President Goodluck Jonathan said this at the opening of the first World Pension Summit in Abuja. His optimism is based on the pension reforms that has in 10 years pushed Nigeria's pension asset to $27 billion from a deficit of $12 billion in 2004. In 10 years of sustained policy innovation and meticulous management, these have facilitated confidence and credibility in our pension system and administration. It also strengthened our pension institutions as we transit from a deficit of about 2 trillion naira then, that's about $12.9 billion in 2004 to accumulate pension assets of over 4.21 trillion naira, that is about $27.2 billion by March this year. In Nigeria, we have gone from about $4 billion equivalent in 2007 to $25 billion now, about 9.7% of our old GDP and about 5% of our rebased GDP. We are positioned to do more. And I know that with the emerging drive to expand the base, we'll be able to contribute to this as the future emerges. I expect that two decades from now, Nigeria should have pension assets exceeding $100 billion. The Naira is expected to remain stable this week as analysts anticipate that the Central Bank of Nigeria will relax the foreign exchange requirements for the Bureau de Chine. The Central Bank of Nigeria last week gave a directive to the Bureau de Chine to increase the capital base to 35 million naira and keep a caution fee of 35 million naira and a non-interest bearing account with the APS Bank.
Last week, the Central Bank of Nigeria sold 605 US million dollars. That's about 94.15 billion naira to end users at its bi weekly retail Dutch auction, RDA, lower than the 642.34 million US dollars. That's about 100.05 billion naira sold the preceding week. Consequently, the official naira rate closed steady at 155.73 naira per dollar. Also this week, the interbank rates are expected to rise following absence of any major inflows and outflows for forex purchases at the bi-weekly retail Dutch action system. The Central Bank of Nigeria will also this week auction treasury bills worth 70.56 billion naira via the primary market. The Minister of Power, Chinedu Nebel, will tomorrow, Tuesday, commission the payment and settlement system of the market operators of the wholesale electricity market of the Nigerian electricity supply industry and the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN in Abuja. Equity transaction on the Nigerian Stock Exchange Monday closed on a bearish note. The Nigerian Stock Exchange All Shares Index depreciated by 273.79 points to close lower at 42,758.02 basis point. Also, market capitalization, which opened at 14.209 trillion naira, dropped to close lower at 14.119 trillion naira. In all, a total of 460 million shares, valued at 4.51 billion naira, were exchanged in 5,215 deals. Report shows that Nestle PLC topped the gainers chart, followed by Guinness PLC, Cal PLC, Nigerian PLC, and Trends Core. On the other hand, Seplat PLC led the losers chart, followed by Dangata Summit PLC, UACN PLC, 40 Oil PLC, and Unilevel PLC. Meanwhile, here are the top five trades. And that's it on business news. Coming up next is sport news with Tom Ojaomi. Stay with us. Now, sports news with me, Tolu or Jeremy. The South African Football Association has denied making any job offer to Nigeria coach Stephen Keshe. This was contained in a statement by Safa on Monday. Uh, Safa President Danny Jordan says uh, reports coming through and carried out by several media outlets quoting Keshe alleging he has an offer on the table from South Africa are untrue. He, however, added that Safa has not entered into a discussion with any coach or the representative of any coach. And now to Euro football, Real Madrid legend Alredo Di Stefano, regarded as one of the greatest of all times, has died. The 88-year-old suffered a heart attack on Saturday and had been in an induced coma in Madrid's Gregorio Maranon Hospital. Real Madrid confirmed the news, saying the Stefano, their honorary president, died at 17.15 Central Europe time. A forward, he won five straight European Cups, scoring in each final between 1956 and 1960. Real President Florentino Perez said he and the club's board would like to express deepest condolences and all their love and affection to his children, their families and friends. Galatasaray have confirmed the appointment of former Italy boss Cesare Prandelli as the new manager. The Istanbul outfit, who had held an exchange of ideas with former Manchester United manager David Moyes, were looking for a new coach after parting company with Italian tactician Roberto Massini last month. Prandelli resigned as Italy boss after the national team's 1-0 defeat to Uruguay at the World Cup that saw them exit the competition early. 
Mosini led Galatasaray into second place in the Super League behind uh, Fenerbahce and also won the Turkish Cup, but left after one season in charge. Now Serie A, a former Chelsea defender, Ashley Cole, is expected to sign for Italian club Roma on Monday, his agent has confirmed. The Serie A club tweeted a welcome message alongside a photo of the 33-year-old arriving in the Italian capital. Coast agent Jonathan Barnett said Ashley is expected to complete his medical screening on Tuesday. The left back is a free agent after Chelsea did not offer him a new contract at the end of the season. Roma published a picture of Cole, who also played for Arsenal, with the message, Welcome to Rome, Ashley. Now, Sandin on tennis, newly crowned Wimbledon champion Novak Djokovic can get back to winning major titles after ending his 18-month drought, says coach Boris Becker. The Serb beat Roger Federer in five sets on Sunday to end a run of three straight defeats in Grand Slam finals. Djokovic 6-7, 6-9, 6-4, 7-6, 7-4, 5-7, 6-4 six, victory also reclaimed the world number one ranking from Rafa Nadal. Becker said Djokovic would now enjoy a couple of weeks off before preparing for the U.S. Open, which starts on the 25th of August. That's Sports News tonight. Thanks for watching. I'm Tulu or Joe. We'll over now to uh, Martin's Dexon for the rest of the news. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? Again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back and now outside Nigeria, Edward Shevardnadze, who helped end the Cold War as the Soviet Union's last foreign minister before becoming president of Georgia, is dead. He died on Monday at the age of 86. He was a controversial figure praised for his role in negotiating a bloodless end to the Soviet Union's confrontation with the West, but despised at home for his 10 years at the helm of post-Soviet Georgia that saw him ousted in a popular uprising. Shevardnadze won high praise on the world stage for his time as Mikhail Gorbachev's chief diplomat when he oversaw arms reduction treaties with the United States and broke the deal that brought down the Berlin Wall. Georgian President Georgi Maglevashvili described the former leader as one of the most distinguished politicians of the 20th century and praised his role in dismantling the Soviet system and the birth of New Europe. Russian President Vladimir Putin also expressed deep condolences to Shevardnadze's relatives and loved ones, as well as to the entire Georgian people. And on South Sudan is the world's newest country. It is preparing to celebrate its three years of independence. The civil war is tearing the country apart, and aid agencies have warned of an impending famine. This report presented from our studios underscores the difficulty experienced by the people of South Sudan amidst the raging war. On Juba's dust streets, giant posters celebrate the third anniversary of South Sudan's independence. But many people in the world's newest country are in no mood to cheer. In nearby Tampin Camp, some 15,000 internally displayed people live in makeshift tents fetching water from tanker trucks and wading through mud. They are just a fraction of the one and a half million people displayed by the civil war that erupted here in December. Before the conflict, Abraham taught Mayak was studying for a degree in biology. Now his dreams are dashed and his daily life is just about survival. The overcrowding is, is, is one, one, one condition that we are facing now. And then another, another condition the way of living, uh, we, are not, we, are not, we are not feeling safe. 
there are so many diseases because we are like we are, we are living under, under the ground and there's the rain thousands of people have been killed in the conflicts between south sudan's first president salva Kiir, and his former vice president now turned rebel leader Breck Moshaw. Human rights groups say both sides have committed widespread atrocities and the country is now at the top of the fragile states index. The United Nations is building several new sites to house the almost 100,000 displaced civilians seeking shelter on their bases. And to make matters much worse, aid agencies warn of imminent famine if they don't receive massive funding for food aid. The Red Cross has begun its forced air drops for nearly two decades, helping to reach hundreds of thousands of starving people. There are alarming signs, signs there. Uh, there is malnutrition, especially amongst the kids in, uh, in sensitive areas. So if that uh, level of uh, assistance cannot be maintained and increased in the next month, it is well likely that the food insecurity will become rather dramatic. Peace talks in Ethiopia have so far failed to bridge the gap or implement a lasting ceasefire. The conflict, which started as a political row between Kerr and his former deputy, has taken on a brutal ethnic dimension, with Marshal's North tribe pitted against the Dinka community that is loosely tied to Kerr. It's a far cry from the Faroe three years ago when both men pledged to build a strong, united and prosperous nation after a decades-long fight for independence from Sudan. It was uh, powerful. People sense, uh, sense, you know, had a sense of, uh, you know, having won uh, the war that they fought for many years. So contrast that with what happened on the 15th of December, uh, where the sense of togetherness the sense of being victorious, the sense of living peacefully uh, without fear uh, in your own country, that, that was changed drastically. From joy and hope to desperation, and now possibly starvation, South Sudan's promising future is long gone, and many are hoping its leaders will at last step back from the brink of catastrophe. Thank you for being with us on Core TV Primetime News. I am Martin Stixon. That's all we can take today. Do have a blissful evening.